Mmm. Ah, this stuff is pretty good. What do you think I'm tasting here? Electrolytes? Alkaline? Hydrogen? So our research found that there are, on average, um, a quarter of a million particles, uh, including both microplastics and nanoplastics um, per liter of the bottled water. Oh, uh, great. I mean, whether we see it or not, it's out there. So it's better that we actually know how much is out there and what they are. Um, but I myself, as a scientist, I would want more data in terms of the toxicology study to actually know that um, whether how um, how harmful it would be to my own body. That's a physical chemist at Columbia University who just led a study that found yes, the average liter of bottled water is chock full of nanoplastics. This team of scientists used all kinds of high tech equipment to carry out this analysis, including special dual laser microscope technology, which one of the scientists invented, in case you were starting to feel good about your New Year's goals. There are actually other techniques. Uh, people commonly use to study nanoparticles. Uh, so it's called electron microscopy. They can actually see very tiny particles uh, in nanometer size, but they don't tell you um, if the particle is plastic or not. So our techniques is kind of the com combines the both benefits, uh, being able to see smaller and then being able to tell that uh, what type of plastic chemical composition is that. So in this new study, these scientists sampled three common bottled water brands, and they detected nanoplastic particle levels of anywhere from 110,000 to 400,000 per liter, averaging out to around that quarter million number. Oh, and the particles they detected here are less than a micron in size. A human hair is 83 microns wide. Here, let me show you. There you go. 83 microns. If the plastic particles breaks up, it does not stop at the micron size. It can actually go even smaller. So once it, the size goes below one micron, people call it nanoplastic, because now it's in, its size is in the nano range. Vice points out that nanoplastics may actually be worse than microplastics. As the iPod taught us, nano is smaller than micro. And at this scale, they say if a microplastic was a WNBA basketball, which is already smaller than an NBA basketball, a nanoplastic in comparison would be the size of a grain of rice. Delicious either way. Our scientist here claims that most of these plastics seem to be coming from the bottle itself, as well as a reverse osmosis filter membrane that's used to filter out contaminants. And like I said, this study was carried out using three major bottled water brands, but they won't tell us which ones. This is Poland Spring. Mm. Is that a microplastic? Here, hold your dual laser microscope up to the screen and let me know in the comments. Anyway, they're not trying to be coy here. Our scientists notes that these bottled water brands are common and were bought at a Walmart. And they just want to sample more brands before singling anyone out. So chill out, you're fine for now, great value. Okay, so what's the big deal about microplastics? Are microplastics and nanoplastics bad for us? And are we all destined to turn into that kid from Crimes from the Future? Well, unlike that relatively obscure Cronenberg film, you can find microplastics pretty much anywhere. Bottled water, tap water, ocean water, the soil, the air, even YouTube. Yeah, there's a user named Microplastic who's got a cool video about jumping on a trampoline at Danny's house released 16 years ago with about 800 views. The United Nations cites a study that says the average adult consumes 2,000 microplastics a year through salt alone. And that's just a flavor enhancer. Another recent study of proteins like pork loin, fish sticks, chicken nuggets, plant-based nuggets, and tofu found that 88% of these things contain some form of microplastics. It's not clear where these microplastics found in the study originated from, but even though I know some of this plant-based stuff is supposed to serve as a healthy or eco-friendly substitute for meat, old toothbrush pieces or plastic bag remnants doesn't exactly scream this is better. But according to a World Health Organization analysis, there's limited evidence that suggests microplastics cause significant adverse health impacts. Indeed, the International Bottled Water Association, which has a podcast on SoundCloud in case the daily's not cutting it for you anymore, and this YouTube video of a makeshift mascot called Mr. Water Cooler, plus this stop motion video that tells the real story of bottled water. Some people think bottled water companies make people buy their products by spending lots of money on ads that criticize tap water. This is not true. Sorry, that was definitely a tangent. I just wasn't expecting to stumble upon bottled water's SoundCloud. 
I hope they've got a Patreon. Anyway, like I was saying, the International Bottled Water Association gave a statement to the Associated Press in response to this study, stating, there currently is both a lack of standardized measuring methods and no scientific consensus on the potential health impacts of nano and microplastic particles. Therefore, media reports about these particles in drinking water do nothing more than unnecessarily scare consumers. Oh, sorry. Still, the United Nations Environment Program claims that the world is drowning under the weight of plastic pollution, with more than 430 million tons of the stuff produced annually. And they claim there are toxic and mechanical effects when microplastics are ingested by marine life, leading to things like reduced food intake, suffocation, behavioral changes, and genetic alteration. And that's just for marine life. Some outside experts praised this study and agreed that while there's some general unease regarding all these tiny little plastic pieces, it's too early to draw any certain conclusions. As for the people who came up with this study, they say they're cutting back on bottled water. 